Okay, great. Hi guys, this is chapter 3. It's not a big chapter. Um, it sort of goes on and looks a little bit at company financial statements. <clears throat> Again, um, you, the truth is, um, as you know, all financial statements are based on the accounting equation. You know that already. A um, is equal to C plus L, right? And really, in the income statement is really I minus E. So we're kind of going back to dead click. Right? So we're really kind of starting off with I mean, I'm just doing this breakdown, but there's nothing special about this. Just A is equal to, starts off with C, and then whatever. Then the business needs more money. So the principle of business entity, principle of business entity starts this. So you should never be mixed up or confused about the same financial position. The business needs more money, then you chuck in an L. Then the business starts trading, and it takes some of that money, if you like, or just get some of them, let me just use a different color here so it means take some of that money in and it either it reduces a bit of A to get the E but the key, or just gets E and uses L so buying on credit, so debit, purchases, credit, trade, payables then you sell it, so however you sell it, either you credit revenue and then debit money or debit trade receivable and then the last thing is that the owner would take something for himself from time to time from the bank. So credit A and debit D. And so we know the whole dead click, I'm sure. Credit, debit. So whenever anything on this side goes up, we debit it. And anything on this side goes up, we credit it. So we have this whole D dead click sort of way of remembering what's going on here. But then let's rearrange a lot of this around so I can bring the E over here. So I minus E gives me profit. And then of course I'm going to take the D over here in the end. So you now have something that looks like A is equal to C, if you like, minus D plus L plus I minus E. And I minus E we know is profit, so you can add that profit on as well onto, onto this. And this is your statement of financial position, ultimately. Your statement of profit or loss was everything. This is I minus E. So this is A, this is this is this. This thing here is the I minus E. Now, statement of changes in equity really is focusing on this sort of C area, right? This is sort of saying the statement of changes in equity. You started off with some. We start. You started the year with C, opening capital. Now, ordinarily, sometimes some people all that all their statement of changes in equity will be will be opening capital plus profit, right? Or sorry, opening capital and there might be some retained earnings or profit from the before plus profit and that's it. Closing capital. Right, but with a sole trader, you'd have learned that it was opening capital plus profit. Because for a sole trader, you don't keep retained earnings. Oops, sorry, you don't keep retained earnings separately. So for a sole trader, it'll just be this and closing capital. Well, for a company, slightly complicated. First of all, we we don't merge retained earnings with opening capital. We have opening capital. We leave it on its own. Well, we'll talk about opening capital in a second. But let's just say that's all it was. And we have retained earnings. And then you have profits. I don't know why that keeps jumping, right? And, but with opening capital, as you can imagine, you have different types. Of, when I say you have different types of capital, you had ordinary shares, and then you had share premium. So that might increase during the year as well. So nothing special. You just have to show the increase or the movement in that from one period to the next and work with that. Okay, let's shoot. So what are we saying? We know what that is. We've talked about that. A and E and L. Okay, so from time to time, always go back and try and make sure you can understand, remember your definition of assets, control, if you like, past event, um, economic benefit flowing in, little things like that. Always make sure you can go back and remember that. Again, here's what the same financial position looks like. You know what the non-currents are. And then your current assets, you have those there as well. And that's your equity section. We've already seen a lot of this. We've seen all this already. So what is the... Again, just definition. Statement of financial position, summary list of all the assets and liabilities um, at the end of the year, non-current assets, those that will be used over a number of years, um, including land and buildings. And then we have current assets. As again, I think I highlighted the fact that we're really dealing with stuff to do with one year, right? One year. So really, there was something I thought that I think that the um, financial position should show. And, it, and typically, I think it's good if it shows you that what, how the current assets are managing to pay off the current liabilities. And that, I think this is quite important because in the short run, in the short term, 
we want to make sure that we can meet our short-term liabilities. So this whole idea of CA minus CL within the statement of financial position is important and you need to be thinking about it. It is not a formula, it's what you want to do in terms of your analysis. It's not about formulas, you actually want to know what's going on. Okay, because you're making decisions, aren't you? So non-current liabilities, long-term loans, current liabilities, of course, again, short-term trade payables, bank overdrafts, things like that. And like I already said, that typically it feels that what they're calling um, um, other comprehensive income in our syllabus, in this syllabus, um, is just the valuation gains. And we don't recognize that in the profit or loss because it has nothing to do with trade, right? It has nothing to do with trade. And we've already seen this. To be fair, we've seen a lot of this. I think this is just kind of doing a final um, a def some definition. Now, you know already, right, that what happens up here, you know, right, that what happens up here is purely to do, oops, sorry, ignore the distribution. What happens here is purely to do with trade, right? Purely to do with trade. You know that. Purely to do with trade. Everything onwards is kind of other costs. Other costs, but this is purely to do with trade. So that's why this is, this used to be called the trading account. This bit up here, used to, I thought that was better. It just made more sense because you knew what it was. This was called the trading account, and this is called everything underneath this is now called the profit and loss. Well, it used to be called the profit and loss. I mean, I'm exaggerating, but really for the sole trader, we're talking about companies now, so things are slightly different. Okay, right. So, which is what they're telling you here that this is statement of profit and loss is a summary of income and expenses. Um, usually one year, the whole thing, and they're telling this is really broken up into two parts: the trading account, gross profit, and the the sort of the profit and loss account, which is what they don't call it anymore, but the whole idea of the net profit after deducting all the other expenses. So, like I said earlier on, this statement of changes in equity, right? Look at the the op this is your opening capital or your at your opening position. You have these four things. So it's just laid. Of, um, it's, so you want to nail this. When I say you want to nail this, there's nothing special here. Um, typically, this is just laid out horizontally. Usually, you would see you would see this in your in your in your equity section. Imagine this is your equity section of your statement. You would just see maybe one number. I'm going to call that number A. So this A is this thing over here. What someone is doing here is saying, well, let's actually see what it's made up of. I mean, this is so. When I say a, this is this would have been if you were talking about a a, 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 a a soul trader, but you will see in your in your um, in your company at the end of say the end of one year. So maybe at the thirty first of thirty um, first of December two thousand and one, you would just see you would see you would see something like well, of course, share cap, share premium. Revaluation reserve, retained earnings, and you'd see here they are x x x x. This is at the 31st of December x x x x, and they all add up to a. Now, but the problem here is that at the 31st of December x two, all you will see again is just this, right? If you think about it, when you see when you look at the equity section at the end of the year, all you will see again is just just all this. The question is, well, how did we get from here to here? Because you see, during the year, this might have changed. You might have issued some more share capital. Some more share premium would have come in. You might have some more evaluation reserve, and retained earnings will could have increased. So that's what it's really saying. How do I get from here to here? And it just does it in this table. And usually, you should have dates here telling you what's going on as you go along. Remember that you're paying out dividends out of profits. So th there's nothing special, really. This is just an additional breakdown of of the equity section, right? So by doing questions as well, you, you, you'll equip yourself. Um, so total comprehensive income, if you like, is, well, of course, total. There's what the profit for the year is, which we, we, we know, and then other comprehensive, and they keep t t they're telling you clearly that it's, it'll be to do with your valuation gains. So, um, well, the difference between a public and a private, a private, and you can read that up clearly, the PLCs, LTDs, right? These are listed. These are listed companies, right? And that's kind of the key point. Um, they both kind of have the similarity. They're both raising money through shares, but typically this is to do with friends and family, right? And you can, anyone can buy shares in these in the PLCs. 
Right. And again, in terms of some requirements, uh, well, sole, uh, sole traders don't need to repair accounts, but they do for their own, for their own. It's good for themselves, but they don't need to. Um, but like I say, if they want a bank loan or I just want to know what, how they're doing, it's a good thing. But limited companies have a legal requirement and must enter companies house a set of accounts every 12 months. Um, and um, tax, well, companies pay corporation tax. I'm sure you know that. Um, and that's kind of that's and that's chapter three. Okay, great. So the questions I want you to do for this one now are question one, question three, question four, and question seventeen. And that's what you need to do. So do this, do these questions. Um, at your next meeting class, we're going to go through some of those questions. I will make videos in some of those questions. Um, but this will be in the next in the next class. Okay, great stuff. Um, see you then.